Welcome to Industry Review. I'm Chloe Smith, and today we'll be discussing the status of the coffee industry with some of my colleagues. First, I'd like to talk a bit about the general industry. The coffee production industry includes all businesses involving roasting coffee, accounting for 73.6% of sales, manufacturing coffee concentrates and extracts in powdered liquid frozen form, including freeze-dried. Major coffee growing companies are in warm climates, three of the largest of the producers being Brazil, Vietnam, and Colombia. The major coffee consumers are in the USA, Japan, France, and Germany. This means that this industry relies heavily on trade. These coffee products sell to five major markets. The largest of these is grocery wholesaling. Through grocery wholesaling, we also reach supermarkets, convenience stores, and businesses. Trade associations affiliated with the industry include the National Coffee Association of America and the Specialty Coffee Association of America. The big players in the industry are seen here. Uh, we have J.M. Smucker acquired Procter & Gamble in 2010, which results in the high market share that they have today. And I'll pass it over to Anthony to talk about the growth. My name is Anthony Copperfisa, and I'll be talking about the growth. Coffee is now in its mature life cycle. Mature life cycle features high brand awareness, wide distribution, new establishments, low competitive prices, and product modifications. Other key features are that coffee's revenue grows the same as the economy, that there are established technologies, and an overall market acceptance of the product. Growth rate. Coffee's highest growth rate was in the 19, er, 1990s and the early 2000s when chain brands appeared on every street corner across the U.S. seemingly overnight. This chart shows a solid growth through 2006 with an increasingly high demand and an annual growth rate of 3%. Future stages. Coffee is far from a decline, though there are signs that convenience could show symptoms of decline in premium coffees, which modern coffee makers are enabling consumers to make single cups at home with no line, comparable taste, and relatively lower prices. The future wages may make up less industry revenue as the industry focuses on coffee brands that are more labor intensive to produce. Now to Joel and Daisy. Hi, my name is Joel. I'm going to discuss the macroeconomics of the coffee industry. The output was 132.7 million bags sold worldwide for the 2011 to 2012 year and the revenue made was nine billion nine and a half billion dollars. The economic factors for the coffee industry are going to be land, capital, labor, natural resources, and regulatory factors such as the Equal Employment Opportunity Act. And the key players for the uh, coffee industry are going to be seen here. And J.M. Smucker had the lowest average product service price of 34 cents per ounce of coffee. And I'm going to turn it over to Daisy now. Consumers are faced with many choices of beverage products today. So how does the industry compete? They focus on doing good. By working with environmental and social organizations, they're able to appeal to, a, to an increasing market of consumers who are more aware of their social environment and their impact on the environment. So now consumers can feel good about purchasing products that do good. Technological practices in the coffee production industry remain quite primitive. The two processes that are st still being used today are dry processing, which is lar largely dependent on labor force, and wet processing, which is more dependent on machinery. However, technological advances can be seen among the consumer products. Consumers will spend as much as they're able to in order to satisfy a need. And now I will hand it over to Kathleen and Lori. Hi, my name is Kathleen Sturian, and uh, there are two major groups of customers in the coffee industry. That is corporations, such as Starbucks and Nestle's, and consumers, which is pretty much everyone who drinks coffee. These are the major markets of the coffee industry. Grocery wholesaler is by far the biggest with 61%. And uh, this is the most important on the uh, supply chain. Retail comes in second with 17%, so you can see that there's quite a difference there. And exports, direct sales, and uh, hospitality round out the rest of the markets. And on the line, let's talk about supply chain. Okay, so the supply chain obviously starts with the growers who do the primary processing, such as the growing and picking of the actual coffee beans. This then leads to the intermediaries who buy, grow, collect, and sell the coffee to other dealers. 
The processors are then the individual farmers who collect the raw cherries and then uh, convert them into the green coffee beans. The government agencies are the are ones who control the main coffee trade, and the exporters are the ones who mainly sell the coffee to other uh, traders and dealers. These dealers in turn then um, supply the ideal coffee beans to the roasters, and the roasters turn the green coffee beans into the end product that we see today that is commonly sold to retailers, uh, which are in grocery stores available today. Thank you for listening. Cheers! <laughs>